Hi, Dan. Hi, Brent. Good to see you. Nice to see you. This is a wonderful museum. You have so many artifacts here. We have over 14,000. <laughs> well, I know we're going to spend some time with Simon Kenton, who's an important figure in the development of, of Urbano. Who is he and where did he come from? Simon Kenton was actually born in Virginia in uh, 1755. He came this way to uh, Kentucky looking for cane fields. Before that, he had had a, a little uh, fight with somebody and thought he killed the man, so he changed his name to Simon Butler. Ended up in uh, Kentucky for quite a while and then came this way about 1799. And in this case, the butler didn't do it, right? Because they found out he didn't kill the guy, right? <laughs> they did find out eventually, yeah. but it took a number of years. So anyway, it was about 1799 and he came up this way with a number of families, the wards, the Jarbos, uh, and actually with about a half dozen slaves. So to kind of put it in perspective, he's a contemporary of Daniel Boone and he's one of the pioneers who's exploring the West, right? That's correct. Boone was actually younger. Uh, Simon Kenton saved Daniel Boone's life at the uh, Battle of Boonesboro. One reason that people are more familiar with Daniel Boone than Simon Kenton is that uh, Walt Disney came along and popularized him. Right. So. Right. And Kenton uh, came here and uh, he, he had an interesting relationship with the Native Americans here. He did. He knew them all. He had actually fought with uh, General George Rogers Clark against them, but then uh, over a period of time he came to know them very well, including uh, the famous Shawnee Chief Tecumseh. He was a captive of the Indians for a while, is that correct? He was a captive several times and ran several gauntlets and escaped, and of course they had great respect for him for doing that. And then he was actually kind of an ally of Tecumseh, as you say, is that right? Uh, at one point he was. Uh, there was an incident in 1807. A man named Boyer was killed here in Champaign County and uh, the Native Americans were blamed for it. So they had what amounted to an inquest in Springfield just south of here in 1807. All the uh, Indian chiefs attended. Simon Kenton attended. Uh, Simon Gertie attended. Uh, Dr. Hunt and a number of other people uh, in Springfield attended. They were told to leave their weapons at the county line. Tecumseh brought his tomahawk, which we have actually right here, with him and uh, refused to leave it at the county line. During the inquest, somebody offered uh, Tecumseh a pipe, a clay pipe. He took that pipe, threw it over his shoulder, and it smashed, and said, I am going to smoke my own tomahawk pipe, and, and there it is. This is a new different handle, but this is the actual implement that Tecumseh had at that meeting. Correct. The handle would have uh, been hollow so he could smoke uh -huh. through it. Uh -huh. see, yeah. so. And from there, uh, other folks start following Kenton and settling here in this area. Is that right? Right. One of the families that came up with him was the Ward family. And Colonel William Ward uh, actually platted the city of Urbana, the county seat of uh, Champaign County. And uh, the county was established in 1805. Now, uh, you mentioned the Ward family, and the Ward family has a famous descendant, correct? That's correct. Uh, Colonel Ward's grandson was John Quincy Adams Ward, who was probably the most prolific and well-known sculptor in the world in the 19th century. And JQA Ward, as we call him, uh, grew up here as a little boy, maybe five or six years old. He went out to Nettle Creek nearby and got some clay and, and formed that little uh, image. Uh, he went on to do a number of famous sculptures. Uh, some that people have seen and they uh, wouldn't even know it. There's a sculpture of Garfield in, uh, near the Capitol in D.C., which I saw this summer and didn't realize it was uh, Ohioan who had uh, created that. That's right. And you can look at any of his, for example, uh, General Thomas in Thomas Circle in uh, Washington, D.C., and you'll see the JQA Ward signature on them. Uh, the famous George Washington overlooking Wall Street uh, is JQA Ward and uh, at least six sculptures in uh, Central Park. Well, you brought out some other fascinating items for us to look at. This is an unusual weapon for us today. What, what's, uh, what is this? The Fugitive Slave Act of 1850 was uh, something that allowed slave owners to come up from the South and uh, retrieve their slaves who had escaped. And one such slave was Addison White, who came up here by the Underground Railroad and ended up in Mechanicsburg, a village just uh, to the east. A man named Utley Hyde was a conductor on the Underground Railroad and, and uh, hid him. Well, his slave master uh, found out about it, came up with some U.S. Marshals to get him. Addison White hid in the attic with this very pistol. And when the uh, Marshal came around to uh, arrest him, he shot down from the attic, hit the Marshal 
uh, in the chest, but the, the bullet hit the, uh, his rifle and ricocheted off, so he was not killed. But uh, they grabbed Addison White and attempted to take him back. There were a number of fights on the way back, sheriffs trying to stop them, one thing and another. At the end of the day, the residents of Mechanicsburg actually raised $950 and purchased huh. Addison White. And that led to a number of uh, legislative debates over states' rights versus uh, federal law. Amazing. Yeah. And of course, many people recognize these Congressional Medal of Honor. What's the story with that in Champaign County? Well, we have nine uh, recipients of the Medals of Honor from Champaign County and just during the Civil War. And of course, this is Marion Ross's uh, Medal of Honor. Marion Ross was part of the Great Train Raid, uh, where a bunch of Union soldiers uh, under a man named uh, Andrews captured a Confederate train called the General. Unfortunately, those, those uh, gentlemen were captured and hung as spies. But uh, yes, Marion Ross is from Christiansburg here in Champaign County. So this gets us through the Civil War here in Champaign County, and the, the county grows. And what do people do? What are the industries here? What are, what are people doing? Well, of course, agriculture was primary, but we did have a number of industries, and uh, I can show you all about it. All right, let's take a look. Okay. Dan, I know agriculture has always been important in Champaign County, but after the Civil War, manufacturing starts to come up here. It did. In fact, uh, we were at one time the broom capital of the world. We had three broom factories here, and then we got into these buggies and sleighs that you see displayed. And this wasn't just one plant. There were several places around the county that made these uh, sleighs and buggies. Mechanicsburg had one, Urbana had one, and St. Paris had the Walborn Riker Company, which was really the most famous of the buggy manufacturers. Well, it's funny, you, you know, talking about transportation because even today there's a company that's tied to transportation that has a really interesting record in aviation, and that's Grimes. Warren Grimes was an orphan who worked for a Ford up in the Detroit area, and of course they made the Ford trimotor plane, and he came up with uh, some wingtip lights for it. This is right before World War II, and all of a sudden FDR came around and said, uh, we need 50,000 airplanes, and Warren Grimes said, uh, I'll build the lights for them, and Grimes is now Honeywell, but they're still building them. And I love those, uh, those lights that are in the case. They're that Art Deco look that would fit perfectly on a Ford Trimotor. That's right, they did, but of course, uh, he modernized those and ended up making uh, interior lights for all the airliners and uh, all the space capsules and the Apollo missions all had Grimes lights on them. I saw uh, one uh, concern, it looks like it was manufacturing railroad items. Uh, yes, the uh, Johnson Manufacturing Company was here for years and they made tinware that the oilers would use on the uh, locomotives and that sort of thing, and we have quite a collection. Mm -hmm. Well, we've only seen a a small percentage of the items you have, and I think anybody would enjoy coming here and seeing what you've collected. Well, we hope to make it a destination and hope people will come over. <laughs>